Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Deerfield Community Church. I am Evelyn Dakota, worship deacon. Our church is an open and affirming congregation, which means whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We have a few announcements this morning. There are two cards in the pews, one's for prayer requests and one is a welcome card. Fill out either or both as needed and put them in the offering plate later in the service. Today is Communion Sunday. There are envelopes in your pew for donating to the Benevolence Fund. The Old Home Day Float Committee is meeting today after worship. Grab a coffee and a snack and gather in the parlor. Please remember to write a note to our Horton Center staff member, Hannah Crosby. There are note cards in a box on the sign-up table in the great room for your use. Put your finished note in the second box. We will gather them into an envelope and mail them to Hannah this week. Thank you for your participation. This is for all ages, by the way, so if you're a child and you don't necessarily want to write a note, you could draw a picture and send it to her and sign your name, and that would be great. Blanket making will continue on the three remaining Fridays of July, so the 12th, the 19th, and the 26th from 9.30 to 2.30, and bring a lunch if you're staying for the day. Please refer to the bulletin insert in which you will find many upcoming events and lots of information. And Pastor Kurt may be away July 11th through the 13th, still to be determined. Uh, as far as life of the church and worship, the Wednesday Word and Wonder series is on session three this week, and our prompt is joy. So please join us for a quiet pause midweek. It's at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. All right, let's take a deep breath and be ready to worship God. Please stand as you are able and join me in singing our opening hymn, God is here as we, your people, meet. Here in noon 
fearless and renewal. God the Spirit comes to each. Here our children find a welcome in the shepherd's flock and fold. Here our bread and wine are taken. Christ sustains us as of old. Hear the servants of the servant seeking worship to explore what it means in daily living to believe and to adore. Sovereign God of earth and heaven in an age of change and doubt keep us faithful to the gospel help us work purpose out here in this day's dedication all we have to give receive we cannot live without you. We adore you. We believe. Please join me in this morning's responsive call to worship. Come, let us gather in the spirit of love and courage. With hearts open to vulnerability and strength, we dare greatly together. Let us run the race set before us with endurance and faith. Amen. Please be seated. We now come to the time in our worship service when we give ourselves an opportunity to reach out to one another, to God, amidst each other, uh, our prayers of concern and celebration. I have one this morning. Uh, Sandy requests prayers for her son, Jacob, who is struggling with carpal tunnel syndrome. So please pray for Jacob. Those are the only prayers I received uh, this week that can you know, be shared writ large. Are there other prayers of concern and celebration? Today, is, is it saying? Today, yep. uh, Stella goes to the actual intensive summer blah blah, and it's called in the uh, it's in the American Ballet, but it is in New York City. All right. She's going alone for a whole week, and awesome. get ready, get set, pray. <laughs> All right, get ready, set, pray. That's awesome. Thank you, Patricia. William, your sister's grandson, okay? All right. Thank you, Carol. Um, prayers for, I have this camp this week, and last year there was two injuries that were bad. <laughs> Um, when I went, not on me, but on other people. So prayers that doesn't happen again. All right, yes, an injury-free camp experience for all. That is something to pray for. I'd like to ask for continued prayers for our daughter, Jean, as she has back surgery this week. Thank you, Susan. Ha. Yep, it's Holly and Jean. 
uh, prayers for uh, coolness this week, and prayers for you, Pastor Kurt, if you get too hot in that black robe, <laughs> then take it off. It's right. very hot in here. So take All care right. of yourself, too. Thank you, Jean. I've been asked to um, bring to our prayers the, um, a young man named Devin who um, was riding his motorcycle the other night and he hit a telephone pole and is in critical condition. He's in his early 20s. Thank you, Holly. Chris? No, oh, we got a mic coming. Hi. Um, I offer prayers, and maybe all of us should offer prayers, for Susan Fisher Fusco, who has contacted COVID along with many members of her family oh. at the lake and at her house. All right. All right. Prayers for the F Fisher and Fusco family. It's, it's Suzanne. Hi. Hi, Suzanne. Hi. I, I just want to say how grateful I am for the beautiful celebration of life and all the God sightings that happened last Sunday and all the love that I felt and received from everyone. Prayers for our friend Chris, who's been sick for like six months and they can't figure out what the problem is. He's been coughing that, all that time. And so prayers for some diagnosis for the yeah. problem. Yes. On Zoom? Are there any prayers on Zoom this morning? Thank you, Cindy. Oh, Cindy? Yeah, good morning. I was just thinking about prayers for families that need to get together more. Um, the Holy Spirit, I don't know, just to see my older son would be really nice. Mm. He got married. <laughs> Spent a long two years. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Is there anybody on Zoom this morning? Yeah. Oh, hi. <laughs> well, now my back is to you. Are there any prayer requests on Zoom this morning? No. Okay. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we come before you today with hearts full of gratitude and hope. In this sacred space, we gather a as a diverse community united by your love and grace. We thank you for the gift of life and the opportunity to journey together in faith. God of compassion, we lift up those among us and around the world who are struggling. We pray for the sick the weary, and the brokenhearted. May your healing presence surround them and bring them comfort and peace. We remember those who are oppressed and marginalized, and we ask for courage and wisdom to stand with them in the arena in solidarity and love. God of justice, we pray for a world where all your children can live in dignity and peace. Guide our leaders with wisdom and compassion that they may work for the common good and strive for justice and equity for all. Help us to be instruments of your love, working to heal divisions and build bridges of understanding and reconciliation. God of courage, we ask for strength to embrace vulnerability and to dare greatly in our lives as we step into the arenas of our own struggles and challenges. May we feel your presence with us, guiding and sustaining us. Help us to support one another with love and compassion, knowing that together we are stronger. God of love. We pray for our community, our families, and our friends. 
Bless our relationships with understanding, patience, and kindness. Help us to be a source of support and encouragement to one another, reflecting your love in all we do. God of reconciliation, we lift up those whom we may consider to be our enemies. Guide us to understand your will for us in relationship to them. Fill our hearts with the spirit of forgiveness, empathy, and the desire for peace. Help us to see our, en our perceived enemies as your children, deserving of love and compassion, and empower us to work towards reconciliation and mutual understanding. As we continue in this time of worship, open our hearts and minds to your spirit. Fill us with the courage to live authentically and wholeheartedly. May we leave this place inspired and empowered to be your hands and feet in the world, bringing hope, healing, and love to all we encounter. In the name of Jesus, our guide and companion, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and evermore. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We are a blessed people. I tell you that every time I get up here, we are blessed. And this moment, we have the blessing of sharing our gifts. So this morning's offering will be given.
third time's a charm. Please join me in this morning's prayer of dedication. Gracious God, we offer these gifts as a reflection of our gratitude and commitment to action in our generosity and love. May these offerings be used to further your work of justice, compassion, and reconciliation in the world. Bless them and us as we seek to live out your call to love and serve all. Amen. And for those who would like to come forward for the message of all ages, this is the time. Good morning. So, um, does anybody here like to participate in sports? Sports of any kind? Emma, definitely know that about you. What's your favorite sport? Uh, cross, country. cross country. Running. We're going to talk about that. What's your favorite? Same. What about you, Eleanor? What's your favorite sport? You don't know? That's okay. You don't have to have a favorite. Suzanne, what's skiing? All right. Basketball, all right. So all of these sports have something in common, and that's that in order to play them, you have to be prepared. So what are some things you do to prepare for these sports? Stretch, oh, good idea, yeah. What else? What do you need to have to do these sports? Gather your equipment, right. So, um, Snow, yeah, you do need snow, that's, that is true for skiing, isn't it? Um, so yeah, so your equipment, you need a lot of equipment for skiing, you need a ball for basketball, you need some good footwear for um, cross country, right? Before you start, you've got your equipment, maybe you have some snow, um, you need to prepare yourself, right? I thought this was the perfect shirt to wear today, so I wore this on purpose. It says, eat your veggies. It's my new shirt I got from our local farm stand. Right, you need to take care of your body. You need to eat well. You need to drink plenty of water, things like that. Sleep well, yeah, get good sleep. So you need to take care of your body. So all these things you're preparing to do this activity. Now there are at least two times that I know of in the Bible that it talks about running a race. One is one of my favorite scriptures from Hebrews that talks about running with endurance, and one we're going to hear today about running a race. And um, so when we're physically getting ready to run a, run a race, those are all the things we need to do. Some of us are runners, some of us are not. Some of us tried to be a runner for a year and really put our heart into it and discovered it just wasn't the thing for us. And that's okay, um, despite best preparation, right? But we can all be race runners in this, um, during, in our faith, right? So in this race that we have that is our life, that we're running with endurance, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint, we're taking our time, we need to prepare ourselves. So how are, how are some ways we can prepare ourselves faithfully to be in this race with God? What are some things that we could do for ourselves? That's a little harder. What? Be still, yeah. Part of this is being present with God, right? That's a way you prepare yourself. Yeah. Pray, Pray. yeah. Read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Keep an open mind, that's really important. Yeah, yeah. We, yep. Yeah. Treat others like you'd want to be treated, absolutely. All the things that you guys are learning about how to follow God is preparing you, is you're already in it. You're already in it, right? You're already in this race. You're already participating in this life with God. So all the lessons that you get and that you hear about, about um, kindness and communication with God and how to treat people and the way he wants you to act, all these are the things that you need to do all along the way to be running this race alongside God. So, yeah. 
Yeah, be respectful, yeah, of each other, right? And yourself. Because really you have to talk kindly to yourself also and give yourself and the people you're with encouragement. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. To whom? To others and yourself and God. That's a lot of listening to do. I think you can do it. Right? Yeah. There's a lot of ways to live so that we are walking alongside God. And so I would encourage you all as we go to do that, to find ways to continue moving forward in your faith with God. So let's be in prayer. God, as many ways as there are to prepare ourselves for a race, there are even more to prepare ourselves to walk alongside you to maintain those things, to listen, to be respectful, to be good to ourselves and others, to be kind. Help us to continue to be that kind of person that we know you want us to be, to keep your faith spreading here on earth. Amen. Good morning, again. This morning's scripture comes from 1 Corinthians and a little bit about Corinthians. Uh, Corinth was a major commercial center that was located in the isthmus between North and Southern Greece. And Paul founded the Christian community there somewhere around 51 or 52 CE. And Paul kept this Christian community going in several ways. Uh, one was that he visited them often, and the other was the letters that he wrote to them to keep them encouraged, to keep them going, to teach them lessons. So here's 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, 24 through 27. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win it. Athletes exercise self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable garland, but we, an imperishable one. So I do not run aimlessly, nor do I box as though beating the air, but I punish my body and enslave it so that after proclaiming to others, I myself should not be disqualified. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, embrace us as we reflect on the courage to face our vulnerabilities. Illuminate our understanding with your spirit, guiding us to live authentically in your light. Your word inspire us to step into the arena of life with faith and boldness, trusting in your steadfast presence. Amen. In her book, Daring Greatly, Brene Brown speaks passionately about the courage it takes to step into the arena. To step into the arena and face life's challenges head on. She reminds us that it takes a measure of vulnerability, courage, and strength to step into the arena. Brown writes, vulnerability is not winning or losing. It's having the courage to show up. 
and to be seen, we have no control over the outcome. This message resonates deeply with the words of the Apostle Paul in his first letter to the Corinthians. Paul calls us to run the race of life with purpose and discipline, echoing Brene Brown's call to dare greatly. Both messages emphasize the importance of showing up fully, embracing vulnerability, and striving with all of our hearts, even when the outcome is uncertain. In our journey of faith, stepping into the arena means embracing our imperfections instead of pushing them away and trusting in God's grace. It means showing up for others and for ourselves with all of our doubts and all of our fears and all of our self-perceived shortcomings and inadequacies and imperfections, knowing that it is in our vulnerability that we find our true strength. Stepping into the arena means choosing to do it despite our anxieties about our self-perceived imperfections and faults, the things that oh, also make us human. Unlike the gladiators of old who had to armor up before entering the arena lest they be eaten alive or killed rather quickly, the arena of life requires us to first remove our armor and dare to expose our vulnerabilities. Stepping into the arena of our life or the life of a community does not require us to be perfect and bulletproof, although that's what we've been conditioned to believe. And here's the thing. If we're going to spend our entire lives waiting for that moment when we consider ourselves to be perfect or bulletproof, safe and secure, before we decide to step into the arena, we are going to miss much. We are going to miss a lot of things, if not most of what life has to offer us. Waiting around for perfection to be achieved, we will have sacrificed relationships that will never blossom. We will miss opportunities until they are unrecoverable. We will squander what little and precious time we have, and we will have turned our back on the opportunity to hone our own gifts and unique specialness that only each of us can contribute. Brown writes, perfect and bulletproof are seductive, but they don't exist in the human experience. We must walk into the arena, whatever it may be, a new relationship, an important meeting, our creative process or project, or a difficult family conversation with courage and the willingness to engage one another. Rather than sitting on the sidelines and hurling judgment and advice, and as Brene Brown suggests, if someone chooses to not enter the arena with the rest of us, fighting and getting their butt kicked right along the side everyone else, then their judgments and their critiques and their criticisms are at best meaningless and worthless. And at worst, hurting, for the, they are hurtful for those who are in the arena and actually living life, doing what needs to be done. We must dare to show up and let ourselves be seen. This is vulnerability. This is daring greatly. Jess and I just happened to sit down last night and watch a documentary on Netflix, and I thought to myself, oh my goodness, this is a perfect illustration for tomorrow's sermon. So I inserted it this morning. This documentary on Netflix, I encourage you all to watch it. It's titled, Stand Out, an LGBTQ plus celebration. Starring Eddie Izzard and uh, 
or I guess you would say, I say izzard, and I'm like, that sounds so terrible because it's British, it's izzard, right? Lily Tomlin, Sandra Bernhard, Rosie O'Donnell, Margaret Cho, along with many others. They talked about the history of what it was like for them to be members of the LGBTQIA community in, in, in the comedy entertainment field and the trials and tribulations that they had to endure just to make it in that world, just to be considered available, an option. They received ridicule and they received obscene jokes. They were the butts of jokes before they would get on stage. Sometimes they were outed without their permission. All done at their expense. Denial after denial after denial of television shows and movies, plays. But each of the folks in this documentary last night, who are now most of them very, very famous, each chose to step into the arena of their life with authenticity and courageous vulnerability, failing, knowing they were going to fail over and over and over again, and choosing to get up and carry on, to fight on for diversity and equity and inclusion. As a community of faith, our calling is to be open and affirming and accepting of all, of all, and that requires us to step into the arena of social justice to stand up against oppression, and to speak out for those who are marginalized. It requires us to live out the radical inclusivity of Christ, even when it is uncomfortable and risky. It means that each of us are called upon to look out for those who are in the arena with us and may need our support, encouragement, and inspiration. They do not need our criticism or critique of their contribution. What might stepping into the arena look like in this community of faith? How can we, as individuals, practice vulnerability in our daily lives within this church community? What specific actions or behaviors might demonstrate our willingness to step into the arena? despite our imperfections. How can our congregation embody the courage to step into the arena of social justice? What might it look like if we chose to advocate for those who are marginalized and oppressed? What are some specific steps we can take to live out this commitment? What spiritual practices can help build re resilience and courage to face our vulnerabilities? How can we support one another in developing these disciplines within this community? How can we learn from moments of vulnerability and imperfection within our church? What stories or experiences can we share that highlight the growth and strength that come from embracing these sacred moments? What kinds of conversations can we initiate in this church to explore the themes of vulnerability and courage more deeply? How can we create spaces where people feel comfortable sharing their personal journeys? How do the teachings of Jesus and the scriptures call us to embrace vulnerability and courage? And how can we incorporate these lessons into our communal worship and daily interactions? 
just as an athlete trains their bodies. God calls us to train our spirits through prayer and study and action, to cultivate resilience, knowing that our strength comes from God. As Paul reminds us, our goal is not a perishable wreath, but an imperishable one, the fullness of life in Christ. Let us, therefore, dare greatly in our faith. Let us run with purpose, embracing our vulnerabilities and trusting in God's steadfast love. Let us step into the arena, not with fear, but with the courage that comes from knowing we are deeply loved and called to share that love with the rest of the world. May we have the courage to step into the arena over and over and over again, even if it means failing repeatedly, that we may achieve that goal to live fully and authentically and to run the race set before us with all the strength and love that God provides. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join me in singing our hymn of preparation. There were so many moments, there are so many moments in the gospel stories, the narrative of Jesus' life that shows us what vulnerability looks like, not just in private, but in public. And it was at that last evening, at that last supper, that Jesus was vulnerable to his disciples. And he invited his disciples to be vulnerable to him to love him and care for him. And he was vulnerable to them because he knew what was about to happen. And he knew that some of those disciples were going to run from him, deny him, abandon him, and betray him. And still, he said, come to me. Prepare a meal. And let's sit down together and break bread and share a little wine. That's the courage and the vulnerability that God calls us to do. To sit with one another in our disagreements, in our joys, in our celebrations, in our despair, in our times of hope and hopelessness, and to remember that we are not alone in God, 
and we are not alone in community. And it is because of the presence of God and the trust that we have in God and the trust that we have in this community that allows us to be authentic with one another, to be real, to be courageous, to be vulnerable. And know that in that vulnerability, we are loved, we are supported, we are cared for. The fruit of God for the people of God come for all is ready. Let's pray together the unison prayer, communion prayer. Loving God, we come to your table with gratitude and awe, remembering the boundless love and grace revealed in Jesus Christ. As we break this bread and share this cup, we recall the sacrifice made for all humanity, inviting us into a deeper relationship with you and one another. May this sacred meal nourish our spirits, strengthen our resolve to live courageously and vulnerably, and unite us in your love, that we may be your presence in the world. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, the first thing he did was give his friends thanks. And he held up the bread for all to see. And he broke the bread. And he said, this is my body. Broken for you. Vulnerable to you. For you. Every time you take of this bread, do so in remembrance of me. And after the meal was over, he again gave his friends thanks. And he held the cup up and he poured it out. Another tremendous symbol of powerful courage and vulnerability. He held the cup up and he said, friends, this is my blood poured out for you. It is a cup of a new covenant, a new promise between God and you, not just you, but your children and your grandchildren. It is a cup of grace and love and mercy and forgiveness. And every time you take of this cup, every time you take a sip of this vulnerability, do so in remembrance of me.
the cup of salvation, take and drink. Please stand as you are able. Join me in singing, Won't You Let Me Be Your Servant. join me in the unison affirmation of belonging. I am an equally precious and worthy child of God. I am a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased. I am created in love and worthiness. I am seen. I am heard. And I am valued just as I am. I am diverse and my gifts are unique, and God celebrates me for who I am. I bring my whole self to God, my joys, my struggles, my hopes, and my dreams. I am welcomed. I am cherished without condition. I belong. I am connected to each person here and to all of creation. In union with God, I find strength and purpose. Friends, as we go forth from this place, may we have the courage to step into the arena of our lives, daring greatly and living wholeheartedly. And may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Thank you.